I love board games because of the face-to-face -face social interaction. But there's some marvelous computer games out there, and I'm going to look at four tonight. Very quickly, Kerbal Space Program. You choose a command module, and you build your own spaceship. What you need first is you need to have a parachute so that your men can get back to Earth safely. This is going to be the Kerbal Earth. And next, I want a decoupler. This means that I can get rid of my used fuel tanks whenever I'm trying to land. These are my fuel tanks here. I'm going to put three on. And finally, I'm going to choose a liquid fuel engine. One of the things I like best is this symmetry little tab. I'm going to choose six-sided symmetry. I'm going to add extra fuel tanks. Are we ready? We boost up the throttle and we fire. Now your students are going to have troubles being able to manage roll pitch and yaw. Be better. Ow! No, I'm I'm I I <laughs> I have forgotten my roll pitch and yaw. I'm now in outer space. I'm close to the Kerbal Sun and the Kerbal home planet. But unfortunately for me, I'm also in a very tight hyperbolic orbit around the Kerbal Moon, and I don't have very much fuel to maneuver by. So this is bad news for Bill, Jebediah, and Bob. Although they look pretty happy now, I don't think if we look at the um, trajectory of the orbit, you can see that does not look pretty. So now I'm going to thrust. Watch what happens to see the orbit that I'm doing. It's, uh, it's changing and it'll become parabolic here. Okay, it's now parabolic. And I'm now heading off into space, and poor Bill, Jebediah, and Bob are in big trouble. Minecraft is the second game I'm recommending. It costs under $30 and can be played in either survival mode, in which case there'll be some violence, or the creative mode. Uh, now, I prefer the creative mode with no violence, but I'm going to show you here the survival mode. So, uh, you are given a terrain, which you can explore. You can cut down trees, um, and I've um, explored into this cave system here. I've got a pickaxe in my hand. I've made a bed already. I, I had to kill some sheep. Um, uh, that, that is not graphically violent. You just uh, take the sheep wool and you can make yourself a bed as long as you have some wood as well. Um, so one of the first thing that I like about Minecraft is the necessity to have good three-dimensional skills in memorizing your layout of your mine that you are creating. So it gives students a great reason to memorize uh, the layout of the mine. Second reason I like Minecraft is because of this crafting table. The crafting table can be used. For example, I can take some um, oak planks and I can create some sticks. Whenever I put the oak planks in this arrangement here, I can create sticks. I can take those sticks and some cobblestone that I've just mined and I can create, for example, a pickaxe. I could also choose a different orientation of that last piece of cobblestone and I could create an axe. Now that axe is going to be useful uh, to cut down trees, but it's not going to be useful under underground. So it's this idea of a function that is so useful for students to get a handle on. And what a beautiful way to do it in this game, Minecraft. The third reason I like Minecraft is because of redstone. Redstone allows you to build circuits, and these can be used to create wildly fantastical mechanisms and machines. 
Minecraft deserves to be popular, and it is. Enjoy it. The next game that we're going to look at isn't a game at all. It's a programming language. You can use it to make games. If this is not taught in some other class, it has to be taught in mathematics class. It's too important for our economy, it, and mathematics and com computer science are too well integrated to somehow think that this should be just forgotten about and let kids figure it out by themselves. No, this has to be taught at some point in their education. Uh, Scratch, I think, is great for grade four, grade five students um, and above. And here, very simple, move 10 steps. If I click this, the cat will move 10 steps forward. Let's see, boom, see, the cat moved 10 steps. Exciting. Uh, now I can have the cat rotate. That just clips right in here. So now if I click this, it will move 10 steps and rotate 15 degrees. Okay, I can do it again. I can do it again. I could add a forever loop or maybe repeat 10 times. How about that? So if I move this up, it's just going to clamp down over whatever I have there. So this is going to do it 10 times. Watch this. There we go. You don't have to become an expert on this to teach it. You, could, you should become a moderate or low-grade expert and then rely on the kids in your class to just carry it forward. The last game that I want to recommend is Incredibots. This is not a game again. It's a physics simulation that can be used to create games or lots of other things. So once you build a little model, you can play here and you can see that this doesn't do a lot. I'm trying to get over that. You know what I probably need? I probably need another wheel. So I'm going to copy this wheel and I'm going to paste it. Okay, I'm going to just paste it right here. Then I'm going to take a rotating joint. I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to enable this motor. I'm going to make it a really strong motor. Play it again. And now I should be able to climb that, kind of like a tank. So that's fun. Uh, again, there's it's impossible to separate physics from mathematics, so if this is not being taught in physics class, which it should be, if it's not, then you need to have this game almost certainly somewhere in the K-12 through curriculum for um, your, your students. I like it in about the grade 5 level. Thank you.